Hi, I'm Danny Wiltswood. We're going to give you a few tips on how to catch a load of these. Right, today we're targeting, or we're trying to target some better fish. We're on a commercial. Um, we, you, the first thing you need to get right is, is your ground bait. Um, what we're using today, we're using a fine fish meal mix. Uh, today I'm using um, F1 Sweet, the Dynamite, and um, a little bit of BT and green with it. Only because it's a fine mix, we can do a lot with it. We can use it in different ways. We can use it on a method feeder if we want to try and catch a bonus carp or a couple of F1s. For your skimmer side of the fishing, there's a few different ways which I'll show you um, where we're, um, we can wet it up, we can use it a bit drier, but it's important that you've got a workable ground bait and it's not got too much feed content in it. Right, today we've got in front of us, uh, we've got an island chock at probably 20, 22 metres. Now what we've got in front of us, like I said, we've got a, a, short, a short slope in front of us and we've got the same on the island. The, the deepest water you're going to find is probably five, five and a half feet. So we don't want to be targeting our bream and skimmers in the shallowest water. I think you're probably going to, if you're going to catch any carp, you'll catch them in the shallowest water because it's waking up now, we're getting into springtime, them, them carp and them bigger fish want a bit of sun on the back. Um, what I'm looking to do today is fish at the bottom of the far shelf. Fish with my ground bait in a traditional feeder way, in a traditional feeder tactics. We short up lengths, which again I'll show you in a minute. Um, we're trying to catch them better ski bream and skimmers. So what we're trying to do is find the crease in between where the where the clay or the gravel runs away from the island into the silt. And if we can find that that level in between there, that's usually where you'll find a bit of food or a bit of natural food for the fish. And it's where they tend to con congregate. That's where we're going to be targeting our peg. Right, feeder choice today. Obviously, like I said before, we're only on a shallow venue, we've got five foot at the maximum and we are going to be fishing in a little bit of silt, a little bit of a softer bottom than what you would get if you were throwing a feeder right up to the islands. Uh, if we were throwing up to the islands, obviously your method feeders and your pellet feeders play a part. And depending on depth and what you're throwing at, usually I'd always opt to fish a small method feeder. Um, it tends to get you a couple more bites, plus you get a little bit, little bit better of a spread with your ground bait and your pellets. Um, it gives the fish something to warm in on. Where we're fishing at the minute, we're fishing for skimmers, we're fishing for bream, we're fishing for anything really what comes about. So we're going to be using live bait, live maggots, a few worms, a um, few dead maggots as, as what it is. Uh, but we're fishing in what I would say is a fine layer of silt at the bottom of the far shelf. So your feeder choice needs to reflect that. Um, we're going to be fishing with light, the lightest feeder really that we can get away with so that your feeder isn't sinking into the into the muck your bait's presentable and we're always leaving a bit of bit of bait when we're winding in for the fish to find on the next cast um, so what i've opted for today is a smooth hound in um, it's a 15 gram smooth hound these sit on top of the silt lovely because they're a plastic body as well they'll sit on top of that they'll sit on top of that silt they won't go in too heavily what i mean in like it, it, when you cast in it's not going in with a big crash you can be really quiet really stealthy you're not spooking fish away from you which on these small commercials they can back away from you they can go around islands they can they can they can leave your swim if you are putting the lightest feeder that you can get away with on you can keep them fishing your peg for longer bait choice for today like i said we're fishing on a commercial fishery well it's a mixed fishery so we have a chance of catching some carp with a chance of some F1s, there is bream in here, tench, roach, all sorts of things. Bait choice needs to reflect that. Um, we are coming out of winter now, it's getting where the temperatures are creeping up and the bait choices reflect that. Where you can't ignore pellets on a, on, a, on a commercial anyway, so we have got some micros with us. We've also got some maggots, some live maggots and dead maggots and a few fluoro pinkies. Uh, on my side tray as well, I've got, I have got some worms, not a lot of worms, but we have got some worms which could play a part. Um, like I said, we're fishing for a mixed fishery and there's no fish swimming what doesn't like worms. So we're going to see if we can catch a few on them, hopefully, later down the line. We'll be starting off negative, 
Um, and like I said, once you've put it in, you can't take it out, is the good old saying. So we'll start off negative, introduce maybe a couple of pinkies, a couple of dead maggots in with your, in with your ground bait. Let your ground bait do the work. There's enough food in that, even though it's there's not a lot of food content in it. There's enough food in it, on because it's only warming up now, there's enough food in that to kickstart your peg. If we find there's a few fish there and they wanted to feed, we can introduce our bait accordingly. So we've got, like I said, we've got we've got a bit of a, a bit of an array of baits really. But the main the mainstay of the, of the bait of the introduction of bait will be an ob micro pellet, uh, a few dead maggots, like I said, and a few plink, few pinkies to start off. Don't be frightened of worms. Worms worms are a, a great bait as an impact bait and as a mainstay of bait. It keeps fish in your peg, even though it's getting warmer now. Don't be scared of putting a few worms in with your mix. You're fishing for bream, you're fishing for, you're fishing for skimmers, you're fishing for anything that swims, and they all love worms, so it could be a great bait on its day. Right, we've all got a commercial like this near where we live. Um, feeder fishing on it, we want a nice balanced setup. Today I'm using a, a 10 foot tournament rod, 4,000 size reel. Um, a light tip, I'll go through that with you as well. The, the lightest tip you can get away with in the end of your rod, it shows you miles more indications on these cooler days where your fish are not moving a lot. You can see indications, uh, you can see, you can sort of find where the fish are as well. Uh, but yeah, you need a nice balance set up. Uh, we're using a um, five pound detection today. Now, I have got a short shot leader of eight pound on it as well just to take the brunt of the feeder moving on the line it, it, your end tackle and everything like that it just gives you a bit more wear and tear on your line but yeah if you need a ba nice balance set up uh, make the job make the job lovely when you're hooking these bream and you're hooking these these fish on on a on a cool day when they've not really woke up yet they're just just about coming out of winter um you need everything to be perfect so you're not losing any fish it makes it makes fishing so much more pleasurable and you're landing, you're landing more fish. The weather lately, it's not been kind to us. We've had some ma massive, massive storms. We've had loads of biblical rain. A lot of the commercials, what we're fishing, the, the chocolate colour. So what we do to combat that, when we're trying to get a few bites, we're fishing visual up baits. Now, what I mean with visual up baits, we've caught a lot today using fluoro pinkies. You could use fluoro maggots. Even when you're fishing on a method feeder, you need bright up baits. What this, what this does, it lets the fish pick it out, even in this coloured water, and it'll always get you a few more bites. Right, a great tip for fishing for skimmers and fishing for bream in, on a commercial uh, is fishing what they call a slack line. Now, what I mean when I say a slack line, when you've, when you've, you've cast in, you've set your feeder, everything's tight to your feeder, what you want to do then is back off with your line a little bit so your tip's basically it's straight. You're still tight to your tip, but your tip's not moving. This is what we mean when we say fishing a slack line. Now what this makes is there's no resistance at all when the fish pick your bait up. You see every little indication and you see a lot more bites doing stuff like that. Rather than having your tip right round in a curve, you're only seeing a bite then when, when it's on. When you're fishing a slack line, you can see a lot more indications and you can see when the fish are in your peg and you can get a good read of what's going on under the water. What we've done today, we've fished, like I said, we've, we've found where we want to fish at the bottom of the shelf. Uh, we're fishing for the, well, we're trying to target bream and skimmers though. What I've also done as well, we've got an island in front of us at say 20, 22 metres. We can follow it around to the left, it'll probably go 25 metres. It's important to rest your swims. Now that it's no good on a cold day, and the fish are still waking up, me keep throwing a feeder over the top of them. You'll catch, you might catch a couple of fish, but then you'll soon find that your peg will go slower. What we need to do then is rest the peg, which will give me an option to chuck a method to an island, maybe catch an odd bonus carp while we're letting our other line settle, drop back on it, we can hopefully get a run of fish. And like I said, resting, resting your swim, uh, it's always, it's always, crucial really when it's when it's still cool sometimes resting your swim is as good as fishing your swim when i was speaking before about wetting your ground bait up or feeding slop um, what i'm meaning is this is our mix what we're using today like i said it's a nice fine mix but when we're feeding slop what we need to do is over wet the ground bait so what we've got just a little bit of water uh, if i put that into your ground bait even if you're working it in like a corner of your ground bait bowl or whatever you're using what you'll find is 
it'll take a load of water on and you get it to the consistency what you want if you're fishing a pole you can fish it a little bit sloppier than what this is probably but with it being in a feeder we need it to hold in the feeder even if it's like a paste consistency like this what that does when you're chucking uh, it creates a cloud in the water gives the fish something to home in on and hopefully it'll get you a few more bites like I said we've got, we're going to be using visual baits today um, visual edges visual baits can always give you a good edge in winter um, what I like to do as well when we're using micro pellets I like to give myself a bit of an edge we're using micros uh, and I like to put a bit of colour on them so today because the water's so coloured I want them bright I want them so they stand out on the bottom and we've dyed them yellow as yellow as, as bright as you can get your bait really uh, what that can do is give you a standout bait on the bottom and hopefully it'll get you a few more bites uh, sometimes them them big fish them bream even your, even your smaller bream your skimmers and sometimes what you need to do is find a little bit shallower water so never ever forget even your edges you're up to your islands where you've got a bit shallower water sometimes it can get you a few more bites